I'm Elia Locardi. Join me as I travel through Kentucky and see its beauty through my lens. This is Kentucky in Focus. Many people will tell you that if it's not made in Kentucky, it's not really bourbon. And visiting Heaven Hill Distillery, I can see how that may be the case. Hundreds of thousands of gallons are aged here and at countless other distilleries across Kentucky. To learn more, I got to speak to a local distiller here at Heaven Hill. So we're in Warehouse I in Heaven Hill Distillery, but how many of these warehouses are there? Well, right now we have uh, 57 warehouses on uh, uh, seven different sites. So right now we have uh, 1.6 million uh, barrels of aging bourbon. So the second largest uh, holder of aging bourbon in the world. Second largest in the world? And second largest in the world, uh-huh. That's a lot of bourbon. That's a lot of bourbon. <laughs> this is the beginning of the aging process, right? Everything, right. Mm -hmm. everything here will then age in different amounts of time. Exactly. Now, when we fill these rickhouses, we don't know what it's going to be. It might be Ed Williams Single Barrel, or it might be Elijah Craig. And then as, we, as it ages and we need product, we'll take it out, and then we'll put new uh, whiskey back in its place. Because you have different ages in all these warehouses. This barrel had a little bit of a seam leak. Actually, the uh, caramelized sugars have, you know, the, the alcohol has leaked out through here, and then the, the sugars have dried, and it's actually caramelized and uh, sealed itself up. So all of these times when you see, like, it looks like it's leaking, it actually creates a natural seal for itself. <laughs> and if you touch it, it's, it's sticky. It's like got a little sugar. sticky to it, yeah. That's some of the sugars. So you can make bourbon candy. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably, got, uh, probably a little bitter, but... It's uh, probably a little bitter. Yeah. What's the biggest difference between bourbon and whiskey? Uh, well, whiskey is generally, as a general term, Okay, to be a whiskey, it has to be uh, taken off the still at 190 proof. It has to be uh, grain, cereal grain, and it has to be uh, grain only. Now, a bourbon has to come off the still at 160 proof, no higher. It has to be uh, aged in a charred oak container. It has to uh, go into the barrel or container at 125 or lower. Is there a reason why it's so famously a Kentucky product? You know, when the, they started bourbon here, one of the great things about it is we had great water because, you know, Kentucky's on a limestone shelf. I see. And it had, you know, pure limestone water. And you gotta have good water, good airflow to make good bourbon. You know, when they started back in the day, anything with iron in it would make your bourbon, wouldn't, wouldn't you know, had impurities in it, iron, and that would give you a bad bourbon. That was why everybody settled here and started making bourbon. And plus, there's an abundance of corn. You, we don't have grow a lot of rye here, so the corn was the next product that they used. You know, to be a bourbon, has to be at least 51% corn. Has to be at least 51% uh -huh. corn. Right. And then we use malted barley for the enzymes, and that helps in the uh, converting the starches into sugar. Interesting. Can you drink it right from the barrel? Uh, you can, uh, probably not legally, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they do. Actually, we do a, a barrel proof, and we'll take uh, maybe 75 barrels, take the aggregate proof of the uh, whiskey that's come out of those 75 barrels, and whatever that proof is, that's what we'll uh, put it at on the bottle. So that's basically a you know barrel proof uh, bourbon. Wow, I'd like to be invited to one of those uh, barrel opening parties. <laughs> Thanks so much for all that info. I've, I've learned a lot, and it's interesting too because this is visually so beautiful. I can't wait to photograph it later too. Awesome, yeah, thank you. I'm scouting around in one of the main warehouses, and I'm looking for the best composition and the best photo. Most importantly, I've waited to the end of the day, and the reason is the light. These windows are facing to the west, and since the sun is low, I'm getting really nice streaming light in. I really like this spot, but it also has this barrel off to the side. So I'm gonna explore every floor and figure out which one looks the best. In these kind of situations, it's not a bad idea to scout the entire place. Fifth floor, nice concentric rows of barrels. Completely clean, good light, nothing obstructing the view on the right side. With a shot like this, the first thing I wanna focus on is Symmetry, and that basically just means centering both myself and the camera, so I can take advantage of the leading lines of the boards of the floors and the ceilings going this way and all the other lines going through the frame and then the nice light sort of crossing everything else. I don't have my tripod with me at the moment, and that also means that I'm gonna to have to adjust my camera settings to get a good shutter speed. If I turn it down to F4 and change the ISO value to about, let's say, 1600, that gives me a shutter speed of 100. I'll hold the camera still enough, and one over 100 means that nothing's gonna be blurry. But it's a little bit difficult. I'm gonna go ahead and take the shot now. Any little rotation of the camera, any little movement, and my lines change. So instead of being perfectly parallel and horizontal, it can be off to an angle just as I twist the camera. I'll do one vertical and one horizontal. 
Well, it's really difficult to find and hold the exact center. So this is a little bit better. I've set up my tripod right in the center and I've spent a little bit of time really fine tuning it. I was able to turn the ISO down to 50, which means there'll be no grain in this photo. And I'm shooting at F8, meaning that everything close to me and far away will be tack sharp. But by doing that, I also have a shutter speed of two seconds. So there's no way that I could hold the camera steady for two seconds. So now that I have a tripod, I can pick the optimum settings for the camera and not worry too much about a handheld shutter speed. I want to get one shot like this the same way that I did before. Rotate the camera and do one vertical shot, just like this. This place is beautiful. So even with something as simple as a smartphone, you're gonna be able to come away with a great photo. And if you bring a camera with you like this, you're gonna get something even better. But if you wanna get the best quality shot possible, try to bring along a tripod. A simple point and shoot photo looks really good, but the longer exposure shot from the tripod looks even better. But enough looking at bourbon, now it's time to finally taste some. My friend Clay Cook runs his own photography studio right here in Louisville, and he invited me inside for a little tasting of some of his favorite bourbons. I have to admit, I'm really excited about this because I've been hearing nothing but bourbon, bourbon, bourbon since I was in Kentucky, and I'm very new to it. This represents a small amount of right. what I've seen, but these are your favorites? I would say these are some of my favorites out of my collection, yeah. I mean, it's so hard because there's so much bourbon being produced and there's so many like newcomers in the scene, and of course there's the, 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 the heritage and the mainstays, but there is dedicated bourbon bars here that all they have is bourbon, and the list is just getting greater and greater. So. It's kind of becoming hard to keep up, but it's, it's just a fun, it's a fun thing. And the popularity of bourbon has been increasing recently. Yes, they call it the bourbon renaissance. And it's just ultra famous here in Kentucky. You cannot find a place that is not serving bourbon. Right. So what should we try first? So let's try this uh, Rock Hill Farms. This is a single barrel bourbon, so it's sort of a, a special distilled bourbon that's uh, really popular, so. All right. There we go, a little sip. And one thing to note, which I actually learned recently, you have a dominant nostril in your nose, and so you wanna tip the glass like this and then breathe with your mouth open. And okay. what that does, you can really smell it a lot better and then kind of lean on one side to whatever dominant nostril you have. I think my right nostril is the dominant one. See, my left is, even though I'm right-handed. But yeah, you can tell there's a lot of like earth in this one wood. It smells great. Oh, that's, yeah, that's really good. A little sweet. Yeah. If I didn't know it was 50% before I had it, I wouldn't have guessed. Right. It feels much smoother than that. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Mm. So moving forward, a little, something a little different than the Kentucky straight bourbon is what we call rye. I just love this bottle, this Peerless Distilling Company bottle. They're fairly new to the game, but not so new because it's such a family tradition for them. 1889, before the prohibition, they started this and then that happened and their family kick started back up like a lot of these bourbon brands are doing and you know they have a beautiful distillery in the heart of downtown Louisville now. It sounds nice because it also has a historical significance. Mm -hmm. This died because of prohibition and then was resurrected and now has become popular. That's yeah. really interesting. And something to note that rye is different than bourbon. Rye tends to lean a little bit more spicy than Kentucky straight bourbon. Yeah, let's give it a shot. It smells completely different. That's definitely got a little bit of a kick to it. Yeah. You but, feel that one a little bit yeah. more. Yeah, definitely. So. It's just a little bit more full-bodied too. Yeah. And it has a stronger finish. Absolutely, yeah. So let's say I have a bourbon distillery mm -hmm. and I'm trying to market myself. How would you photograph me and the bourbon together and make it look good? You know, most people go for the traditional sort of in the Rick House shot, you know, on location, which is what I do a lot. Um, I've decided to land on this sort of uh, more earthy sort of canvas that we're going for. There's a lot of kind of brown tones in it, and that's gonna blend really well with that sort of 
earth heritage, wood sort of vibe that a lot of these uh, distilleries are going for. Let's do it. It's going to be a little more difficult to make me look good on <laughs> camera, but... Do we want to get a bourbon though first? We do. All right, let's move to this because this is another new kid on the block. It looks like a wine bottle, right? It does. I photographed those guys. It is a Kentucky straight bourbon, so it's not a rye, but it's cast strength, meaning the proof on it is... Very specific, 115.3 or 57.65% alcohol. Right. Give that a shot and shoot around a little bit. I'm gay. What makes a great portrait is like selfie style, like... Yeah. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's pour it in a glass. All right, well, you can crush my dreams. It's fine. <laughs> so we have some... Apple boxes? Yeah, so these are apple boxes. We actually painted these black and then dragged them through the street just to add texture. This gives you the option to basically like move around and you know stagger yourself and, and give yourself a little bit more options when posing. So we have everything set up. Yep. And now you're just gonna have to direct me because I'm a horrible model. Let me have you turn this way, Elia. You're just kind of hanging out. You're kind of like leaning forward with that kind of drink in your hand. Kind of keep your head kind of in this zone. Okay. We just don't want to look too far that way or too far kind of over this way. I'm shooting kind of wide, so I'm kind of getting some of this background a little bit. This big black V flat there is actually to, to what we call negative fill to sort of decrease that light so it adds a little bit more drama. And it keeps light from bouncing back, right? Right. So if that was white, it would just bounce light everywhere. And so we don't want that. We want to keep this sort of dramatic and the most interesting man in the world, right? It's a stretch for me, but <laughs> we'll, we'll do our best. <laughs> All right, here you go. You gotta turn the hat backwards. So tilt your head a little bit this way, there you go. And kind of like, let's even go for maybe even like worse posture. Maybe like leaning into that, yeah. There you go. You're a total pro at this because I don't have to tell you anything and you just look like a supreme badass. Now you're gonna make me laugh. <laughs> That's cool though. All right, so look about right over here. There you go. I like it. I like that little, uh, there you go, okay, yeah. It's what we call the glamour giggle. <laughs> Perfect, yeah, excellent. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Chin around this way, yep, there we go. Cool. I think we got an awesome one in there, man. Here's what we kind of got so far. That's a fun one. Yeah, I like that. Sometimes we might take that out or crop that in, but you know, I like shooting in the environment and in the moment. Yeah, it looks great. It would yeah. make a perfect profile photo. I don't know about a resume photo. I might have to lose the bourbon, you know, because <laughs> I don't drink every day, but when I do, bourbon. Good call. Thanks, man. I really appreciate this. Yeah, you it's got it. It's been fun. Cheers. Cheers. Making bourbon is an art form in itself, and I only see the popularity rising. But if you're going to drink bourbon, the best place is, of course, in Kentucky.